Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship his name. Oh, I'm here to worship him. Oh, nothing else matters. I'm here to worship you, Jesus.
why don't you lift your hands and worship? Oh, I'm here to worship you, Jesus. Oh, from my heart to the heavens, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm here to worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just, let's just go ahead and lift our hands one more time in praise. And he's a God that is so worthy tonight. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, God, how could we ever count the cost that you paid? God, how could we ever begin to comprehend, oh, Lord, the pain, the agony, and what it cost you? But, Lord, when you looked down, you said they need a Savior. Hallelujah, Lord. You became the supreme sacrifice. We glorify you. We praise you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for you alone are worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we put our hands together one more time and just praise him? you turn to somebody say I'm glad I'm here tonight it's good to be in the house of the Lord smile real big greet them and then you may take your seats if you so desire blessed be the name of the Lord what a mighty God we serve and he's the same yesterday what he did then he will do today and what he did today he's going to do tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow because he's a God that changeth not I'm so glad that we serve a risen Savior, a Savior that's alive. Around the world tonight, there's multitudes of people that are bowing before a Buddha, bowing before a statue, and even giving praise and honor to, a, to an idol that cannot speak. But I'm so glad tonight that I know the real God, the true God. And he speaks. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes, he does. He speaks, and not only does he speak, but he cares, and he moves. And I'm so glad that he's in this place tonight to touch us, uh, to encourage us, to touch our hearts, and to let us know just how much he loves us. Aren't you glad he loves you? Give him a hand, praise, one more time. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here we are on another Wednesday night, and the Lord helping us. We're going to be talking about heart still, and we've heard some marvelous, wonderful teachings, uh, amen, about the heart these past, I guess it's been about seven or eight weeks now. And it just seems like it just doesn't run out. It just keeps coming. And, and we've appreciated and enjoyed it so much. And tonight I have the opportunity to come before you and to bring you what God has laid upon my heart concerning the heart tonight. And I do have to ask a favor of you as we get started. I haven't taught for a while. And so I don't have the time quite down right. So if I'm a little short, I know you won't care about that, right? <laughs> but if I'm a little long, just bear with me a few moments and I'll wrap it up just as quickly as I see that 8 o'clock time approaching. Can, are we together on that? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for doing that. And I also noticed just now, as I'm standing here looking at my notes, I can hardly read them. <laughs> they were all right at home. <laughs> but my eyes have gotten blurry. Come on, help me out. I've gotten older, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> but thank God I still feel it inside. Amen. Anybody still feel it inside? Well, glory to God. <laughs> and it's still real. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited tonight and so thrilled and honored that, that God would use me to come before you tonight to give you a message that, amen, that he has put upon my heart. And I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed that God would choose me tonight to deliver his word to someone tonight in this place. I don't know if it's someone here specifically, if it's someone out there in video land, but I know that God has given me a very specific word tonight for someone. And, and every pastor knows what I'm talking about. I, I mean, you may not know who it is, but you feel like God has given you something special that he wants to share and wants somebody to know. And God wants somebody to know this tonight. And as far as the rest of us, I'm going to grab a hold of it because God's no respect of persons. Is that all right? <laughs> Whoever it is God wants it to know, I'm just going to jump on the bandwagon with them and say, bless God. God, I want it too. Can I get a witness? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Um, as we start out, to kind of get us on the right track, if you would, and get us all in one mind, I want to start out with the thought that says God is good. I think we can all agree with that tonight. God is good. Amen. His nature and his makeup is good. 
Amen. Everything about God is good. There's nothing evil in him. Amen. God is good in everything he does. His nature, all of his dealings with humanity is good. As a matter of fact, God is not evil. He's not judgmental. God is not vindictive. Are you with me? Some people are vindictive. You know, they want to get even with you. God doesn't, isn't trying to get even with anybody. <laughs> Amen. If you've made some mistakes, God's not trying to get even with you tonight. Is that all right? He loves you and he loves me. Amen. So he's not vindictive tonight. Amen. God is not, uh, he doesn't hold on to grudges. And, and most of all, he has no respect of persons. Amen. And God loves to give good gifts. Anybody ever receive something good from God? He is a positive God. Amen. And he loves to give good gifts. If you've ever received anything from God, can we just take a praise break right now and just lift our hands and thank him for what he's done. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Jesus, we praise you tonight. And we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that you've done. And we praise you tonight, Lord. You are a good God. And hallelujah, Lord. You are a righteous God. And you are a loving God. You are a forgiving God. And hallelujah, Lord. And we glorify your holy name tonight and thank you for the things that you have done. And even the psalmist David said it this way. He said, I've never seen the, or the, Right. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Amen. God always supplies our need. Can I get a witness tonight? As a matter of fact, the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse number 19 for our first scripture tonight. The scripture says, but my God shall supply all, everybody say all. All your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Anybody believe that tonight? Anybody have that happen in your life? My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. And I believe tonight that God has some great riches and glory. Amen. Things that we have not ever seen or couldn't even begin to comprehend or understand. And he's able to supply all of our need according to our riches and glory. Now, I've often said, and you've probably said it too, God promised to supply our needs, but he didn't promise to supply our wants. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> you probably said it, I said. Well, God has been dealing with me, and I'm rethinking that statement. <laughs> and I hope you bear with me tonight. Uh, amen. Because uh, I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable preaching this because it's not a thought that I've preached before. And I don't hear it preached too many times, but it's in the Bible. I have Bible for it. Amen. As a matter of fact, Jesus even said it himself. And so we're going to go in that direction tonight. But I believe tonight that God does more than just supply our needs. I believe that God, who is loving and giving and so awesome, I believe he wants to supply our desires. Is that all right? Our wants. We'll get into that in just a little few more moments tonight. Uh, amen. He not only supplies our needs, uh, amen, but he also supplies our wants. Uh, God's love is so strong and it's so deep, he wants to go beyond, and God wants to give our hearts, give us our hearts' desire. Our heart's desire. Are you with me tonight? Our heart's desire. Anybody have a, well, let me ask you now. Anybody have a need? <laughs> Are you with me? Anybody have needs? Just a few people? Okay, great. I'll be over your house tomorrow then. <laughs> How about without really, you know, jumping out too far, does anybody have any desires? Have you been asking God for something? Maybe down deep inside you have desires. You know, we don't usually talk about the desires because we feel like it's selfish and, and, and it's flimsy and there's so many other things going on in the world today. And, and, you know, I'm just happy because this world is not my home and I'm passing through and all that is true. But I also believe that we're missing the blessing of God sometimes because God wants to give us the desires of our heart. Can I get a witness? Turn to somebody and say, that's right. God wants to give us the desires of our heart. And we're going to be talking tonight, matters of the heart. We're going to be talking about the desires of the heart, or if you would, hearts, my heart's desire. Let's look at first, if you would, to the book of 1 Kings chapter number 3. And we're going to read verses about 5 through 15. 1 Kings 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. And we're going to be looking at about... Uh, Five through about verse number 15. You know the story, but let me just read it quickly in your hearing tonight. First Kings chapter 3 and looking at verse number 5 through about verse number 15. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Does that sound to you like God wants to give you the desires? <laughs> he said, ask what you will. He didn't say, what are your needs? He said, ask what you will. 
I'll give you anything if you just ask. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him thy great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Are you with me? What a humble person. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for the multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. Everybody say it pleased God. All right. I get you to help me out because I can't see you good. I have to know you're still there. Okay. And Solomon had ended this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked life for thine enemies, or asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have given also unto thee that which thou hast not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all the days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy ways. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Now, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of going out on a limb here, but I can imagine that there was things that Solomon would like to have had. He wanted to be able to lead the people, and that's for sure. But I'm sure that he had needs and maybe even desires in his heart. But he said, God, I only want to please you. The thing pleased God. Are you with me? The thing pleased God. And God said, because you pleased me, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. Amen. I believe tonight that God knows our very thought and our very intent. Have you ever just thought a thought, maybe didn't say it out loud, didn't even get it into a prayer, and God just brought it to pass? Isn't that awesome? God has blessed us so many times that way, and you as well. You just think about it. You don't write it down. You don't pray for 10 days. You don't fast for it. It just kind of went through your mind, and the next thing you know, zap, knock, knock, knock. There it is, you know, however it comes. Wow, that's amazing, Lord. Or somebody just comes up to you and gives you something that you were just thinking about, like, wow, that's amazing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Or, or you go out fishing, and you catch the biggest fish you've ever caught. Yeah. Of course, I guess you're thinking about that when you go, though, aren't you? <laughs> okay. But you get the thought. Amen. Because you didn't ask for it. I'm going to give it to you anyhow. There's so many times that God has blessed us with things that we didn't even ask for. It, but I still believe tonight there's things that God wants to bless us for that we pray for and earnestly desire. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Amen. So more than just our needs, more than just our what we have to have, I believe that God wants to give us our heart's desires. In the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, in verse number 20, the scripture declares, now unto him, that's God, all right, that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him, from Jesus, that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even ask or think. Praise God. God's got you covered today. Amen. He's able to do it. Amen. I said he's able to do it. He's got you covered today. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, and above what we ask and even what we think. God's got it covered today. Amen. And he wants to give us our heart's desire. I feel very strong in the spirit tonight as God was beginning to dealing with me. Amen. That God wants to do something very special for someone. Amen. It may not be in this auditorium. It may be on the video tonight. But I felt very strong that God is speaking directly to someone and is allowing me to be the messenger tonight to let someone know that God has heard you and he wants to give you your heart's desire. 
I feel that with all of my soul tonight. Let me say it again. God has heard you, and he wants to give you your heart's desire. One more time. God has heard you, and he wants to give you your heart's desire tonight. He delights in giving above, amen, abundantly all that we could ask or even think. And if we'll reach out by faith tonight and accept that, God is going to do some awesome things in my life, in your life. Amen. Because he's no respect of persons. It may be for one person, but we can all grab a hold of it tonight. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm going to grab a hold of it tonight. Above, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think. But let me tell you tonight, in our heart's desire, there are some guidelines that God tells us. Is that all right? Don't expect tonight to leave here and say, well, Pastor, something said we can have anything we want. And go over to the casino and put your money down. Say, okay, I'm ready to pull that, pull that arm, buddy, because I'm going to get it. There are some guidelines. Are you with me? Amen. There are some restrictions that he'll give us our heart's desire. But first of all, I want you to notice that, amen, that first of all, he's not going to, uh, uh, he's not going to give us, okay, let me say again. He's not going to honor lustful or vainglory requests. Is that all right? He's not going to honor lustful requests that we have. God, I want a Harlem. <laughs> no, is that the right word? No, a bunch of, or God, I want 10 brand new cars. Or God, I want to go to the casinos and be able to win. He's not going to honor lustful, amen, or vainglory. God, make me great and let me be something awesome so that everybody knows my name. He's not going to do that. Are you? There are some principles and there are some guidelines. But God wants to give us the desires of our heart. Number two is God is he's not going to go against his word or his principles. Amen. If you want something that is against the word of God or against the principles of God, just forget it. He's not going to do it. The scripture goes on to tell us in James, the fourth chapter, verse number three. I think I put this down. James 4 and chapter number, or verse number 3. That if we ask amiss, okay, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That is, you ask wrongfully. You ask wrongfully. Amen. You ask for wrong things. You ask for things that aren't, that aren't right, that aren't morally right, or that aren't acceptable before God. And because you ask amiss, he said, you ask that you may consume it upon your own lust. And God said, you're not going to get those things. Everybody with me now? You're still with me? Okay. There's some things God just isn't going to do for you or do for me no matter how much we pray it. He's not going to let you win the casino no matter how. And if you do, it's not God. <laughs> All right. Come on. So be careful. <laughs> so if we ask a miss, he's not going to do it. But let me state it again. God wants to give you your heart's desire. Amen. Hallelujah. Throughout the scripture, there's many, many times that the word desire and heart's desire is mentioned. We know David said, Lord Jesus, create within me, oh Lord, uh, I desire to have truth in the inner parts. I, I want a clean heart and a right spirit. Uh, amen. The Bible tells us of Timothy who is desiring to be a bishop. The Bible tells us of James and John who desired to sit on the right hand of God. The Bible tells us that we should desire spiritual gifts. Even Jesus himself had a desire. Are you with me? Jesus had a desire. There was something that Jesus desired. If you turn with me or care to look at it, Luke, the 22nd chapter in verse number 15, it had a natural implication, but it also had a spiritual implication. And the Bible tells us, Jesus said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus said, I've desired, as he looked at those 12 men, he said, I've desired to be with you. I've desired to sit down with you. I've desired to talk with you one more time. There was some love that was burning in his heart. And no doubt he was saying, I just can't wait to get to that place where the, where the feast has been prepared. I just desire to be with them, be with Matthew and Mark and Luke and, and be with all the disciples. Yes, Judas is going to be there, but it's okay. I've got it under control. I just desire to be there and to eat this bread and to drink this wine and, and to take this Passover with you. There's a burning desire in my heart to just do it with you. Jesus had a desire. It was a natural desire, but it was also a spiritual desire. <coughs> we can have natural desires and things that we want that, that have a spiritual application. But let me step out on a limb here. We can also have heart's desires that may not be spiritual, but that are certainly all right. Are you with me? That are certainly all right in the realm of God because we're not asking amiss. Let me say again, God wants to give you and I good gifts. 
Amen. Just like husbands or just like fathers and mothers and children, we like to give good gifts to our children. We like to do good things for them. God wants to do good things for us because we are his children. He wants to give us things. And if we ask rightly, amen, if we ask before the Lord, there's no reason why he's not going to say, okay, I want to give it to you. Praise the Lord. He desires to give us good gifts. But there are some guidelines, there are some principles, amen, that God will not go beyond. God wants you to have your heart's desire. There are some key principles, if you would, in receiving our heart's desire. There are some key things that will help us to receive our heart's desire. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 31 and verse number 32. We're looking at Luke 12, verse 31. Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, let's turn to Psalms 37. We've got to do that first. I told you my eyes aren't too good up here. <laughs> Psalms 37, and I want to read verses 1 through 9, okay? Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Somebody tell somebody, trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the what? Desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, thy judgment as the noonday. Verse number four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. There are some keys to receiving the desires of our heart. Number one is we should delight ourselves in the Lord. Is that all right? We should love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with everything that we have. Delight ourselves in the Lord. We should praise God, love him, amen, and we should do our best to please God. Remember Enoch? The Bible says that Enoch was a man that walked, and you know the story. Amen. He was, and then he was not because he had this testimony. He what? He pleased God. He didn't do anything great. He didn't preach any great conferences. Not too many people knew his name, but he had this one thing. He pleased God. Lord, that's my desire. I want to just please you every day, Lord. Can I get a witness in the house? Uh, Lord, I want to please you, Lord. Amen. So one of the one of the Keys is we have to delight ourselves in the Lord to please God. We must love what he loves and hate what he hates. Uh, uh, our senior pastor, uh, uh, Gillis, preached so eloquently the last couple weeks or maybe last week about things that God hates and things that God loves. We must love what God loves, and we must hate what God hates. Uh, and in Proverbs, the 16th chapter, you can read it. You've already read it, but read it again. There are some things that God loves, and there are some things that God doesn't like. There's some things that God hates. And if we want to be pleasing to God, we have to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Can I get a witness? Amen. And David said, Lord, I want a clean heart and a right spirit. We must have a clean heart and a right spirit. My prayer every morning is, Lord, give me a right spirit today because there's a lot of evil spirits going around. Isn't it the truth? I don't want them getting a hold of me. I want a right spirit, Lord. I want to be able to love everybody, Lord. I want to be able to do the right thing. We used to sing a song a number of years ago, and, and maybe you still remember it. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, give me a right spirit, Lord. I just want to be right before you, Lord. I, I want to be fair and just to everybody and treat everybody the same, Lord. Give me a right spirit. Hallelujah. I want to please you, Lord. Give me a right spirit. Spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. And in Luke, the uh, uh, 12th chapter, verses 31 and verse number 32, we're looking at a couple of keys, and we're just going to do this quickly, a couple of keys in receiving the desires of our heart. Again, does anybody have any desires tonight? I do. I, I certainly do. There's some things I've been praying about, some things I've been desiring. And, amen. And I believe tonight that if I'll grab a hold of it, even though God is telling somebody tonight that, that he's going to give you the desires of your heart, I believe that's for me and it's for everybody else also tonight because God's no respect of persons. Amen. And Luke, the um, 12th chapter, verse number 31 and verse number 32, he said, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. I think that's the new King James Version. But it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Let me say it again. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then 
Amen. Solomon sought first the kingdom of God, if you would. He sought first to take care of the people of God. He sought first to do the right thing. And then God said, I'm going to add everything to you. You have desires. God said, seek me first. Put me first. I believe Pastor Mike taught last week about Jesus being the center of it all. And they sang the chorus and how beautiful it was. If we make Jesus the center of everything we do, if we run everything through the filter of God, can I get a witness tonight? Lord, because I want to seek you first. That's the foremost thing in my life. And when we seek God first, amen, God honors our desires. He honors our requests, and he gives us the desires of our heart. Can I get a witness tonight? Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of God? In Romans, the 14th chapter, verse number 17. You've heard this before, but let's say it again. Amen. Romans, the 14th chapter, verse number 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness. We must seek first his righteousness, not my righteousness. Our righteousness is as you got it. <laughs> Amen. We can never be righteous enough. We can never be holy enough. We can never be pure enough. We'll do the best we can, but we still come short. And that's where the grace of God comes in. That's why I pray, oh God, fill me with your righteousness. Remember that song years ago? This is going to get you now. Some of you won't remember this one. Okay. But I think Brother Joe's got it. Amen. Uh, see, how's it go? I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. I gave him my old tattered garment, all of my righteousness, all of my goodness, which was, mm, and he gave me a brand new robe. He gave me his righteousness, and I put on the righteousness of God. Can I get a witness tonight? That's what I'm seeking for, the kingdom of God. I'm seeking for his righteousness, not the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, amen, not the righteousness, amen, of just being good, but his righteousness tonight. I want to put on his righteousness. And when I put on his righteousness, God said, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to give you what you've been praying for. I'm going to give you what you've been asking for. I want to give you the desires of your heart. But if something stands in the way, God can't do it. But when we put on his righteousness and we seek him first, amen, there's nothing standing in our way. The second thing he says, we must seek his righteousness is righteousness, peace, peace. Philippians 4 and 7 says, and I'm, I'm, I'm running short. I've gone about four minutes over, maybe five. Hang in. Fasten the seatbelts, okay? <laughs> Amen. We must seek his peace. Romans 14 and 7 says, uh, uh, right, the Holy Ghost, are, uh, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. So I seek his peace, his righteousness. I also seek his peace. There is a peace that passeth all understanding. Come on. No matter what, have you ever had somebody say, how do you ever go through that? How are you bearing? How are you standing up under that pressure? There's a peace. I can't explain it, but I feel it in my soul. I know everything's going to be okay because I'm in his hands. I know everything's going to turn out all right because I'm trusting him. And there's a peace. We've got to seek that peace. Are you with me tonight? I want that peace in my life that no matter what happens, I can say, I'm covered. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm taken care of. Amen. God's got it under control. I want to seek his righteousness, and I want to seek his peace, and I want to seek his joy. There's too many Christians today, not here, okay. <laughs> There's too many Christians that have never smiled since I've been in church. <laughs> All right, well, come on. And I'm not saying you have to go around with a big smile on your face, but there ought to be some place, sometime, somewhere that we can reach way down and just grab a little grin or something. <laughs> Are you with me? And there should be some joy down there somewhere. And I'd be the first to tell you, as these old bones get old, they're not as joyful as they used to be. But every once in a while, something gets a hold of me. <laughs> Are you, Brother Joe, am I all right? <laughs> Amen. Every once in a while, something gets a hold of you, and I just got to let go. I, I just can't keep it in. I just got to let it out. I got to praise, and I just got to let it out. It just comes out. Amen. Because there's some joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Sometimes the reason we are so weak and the reason we are so down is because we don't have any joy. And we have so much to be joyful for. This world is not our home. We're passing through. God has a place prepared for them that love him. Amen. So I'm seeking his righteousness. I'm seeking his peace. And I'm seeking his joy. And it's all in the Holy Ghost. That's where we get it. 
Amen. It's all in him. When we have the Holy Ghost, we can seek his righteousness. We can seek his peace. We can seek his joy. Amen. And as God begins to honor our life, he opens up and begins to give us the desires of our hearts because we're going to ask for right things. Amen. We're going to ask for those things, amen, that aren't amiss. But we're going to ask for right things. And yes, even things maybe that not have any spiritual application to them at all. Are you with me? Come on. God still wants to bless you. There's some things God wants to do for you and he wants to do for me. And amen. And we can receive the desires of our heart. I believe tonight, I'm getting ready to close. I believe tonight that God is wanting to give someone in this place, or maybe out there in video land, someone that's going to hear this next week. God is specifically wanting to give someone in this place, and he's sending a message to you to tell you that he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Can you receive that tonight? Grab a hold of that. God said, it's not me. God said, he wants to give you the desires of your heart. I'll go a step further. He's heard your prayer. Hallelujah. And he's already sending the answer on the way. He's going to give you the desire of your heart. It's not for your own lustful youth, uh, uh, use. It's not for just something, your own glory. But he has heard your prayer, and he's going to give you the desires of your heart. We're talking about the desires of the heart. And Matthew, the 11th chapter, just two more scriptures, verse number 23 through verse number 26. Matthew 11. Matthew chapter number 11. Let me turn it up quick. If you're here, say amen. Do you have a desire? Anybody have a desire tonight? Hallelujah. God wants to give it to you. Amen. I'm sorry, I said Matthew. It's Mark, Mark 11. I told you my eyes are going. <laughs> Mark 11, verse number 23 through verse number 26. Why don't you stand with me tonight? Mark 11, starting at verse number 23. Jesus Christ speaking. You got that? It's in the red if you have that kind of a Bible. Jesus Christ is speaking right now. And this is what he's saying. Verse number 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen? Come on. Jesus said, if you'll believe it, you can have it. He didn't say, if you have a need. He didn't say if there's just something that is very spiritual, but he said whatsoever things you believe, if you'll believe it, you can have it. God wants to give you good gifts. Now, let's look at this next verse, verse number 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Whatsoever things ye, say the word, whatsoever things you desire. Do you desire something from God tonight? If you desire, God said, when you pray, if you'll believe it, I want to give it to you. Grab this tonight. God says, I want to give you the desires of your, of your heart. There are some restrictions. We understand that. But he wants to give us the desires of our heart. Then it goes on to say, <clears throat> says my eyes focus. I'll read it. <clears throat> Verse number 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if we do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. It's rather unique that Jesus Christ would put in the middle of this, you can have whatever you want if you believe it. I'll give you the desires of your heart. Whatever you desire, I'll give it to you. And right in the middle of that, he says, but if you have ought against your brother, are you with me? If you have something against somebody, you need to forgive them. Amen. You need to make things right with your brother or your sister. You need to have some forgiveness in your heart. Can I tell you one of the most godly things we can do is to forgive someone. Hallelujah. Doesn't it feel good when you just put it behind you? Amen. And right in the middle of all this faith, God says, and if you have something against someone, forgive them. <laughs> wow. Just forgive them. Just dismiss it and forgive it. Because God says, I want to give you the desires of your heart. One more scripture, if you would, Revelation, the third chapter, just a couple verses, 7 and 8. Thank you, Jesus. 
This is what Jesus told the church, and I believe he's telling us tonight. Let me say, I believe that God is pleased with this church. I believe he's pleased with the direction that we're headed. I believe he's pleased with all that we're doing with the new campus. I, I believe he's pleased with everyone that's helping as best they can. I, I believe that God is pleased with what we're doing. I, I believe he's pleased with our pastor and the instructions that he's given us uh, and the work that he's doing and just wearing himself out. I believe that God looks down upon it and he's saying, I see it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Life Point Church, I'm going to give you what you're praying for. You've been praying for a revival. Is that what you've been? I'm going to give it to you because I see what you're doing. And it's not going to go unnoticed. I want to give it to you. I want to fill the church. I want new souls to come in. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to save your sons and save your daughters and save your children. I'm going to give you the desires that you're praying for. And along with it, I'm also going to bless you with things that you didn't ask for. Can I get a witness? And in Revelation, the uh, seventh chapter, chapter, third chapter, I'm sorry, verse 7 and verse number 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, and he that is true, and he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man can open. Verse 8, amen. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. I think Pastor Gillis, Senior Pastor Gillis, read this a few weeks ago. Amen. And we need to read it over and over because I believe that God is speaking directly to Life Point Church. I have opened a door and nobody's going to be able to close it. Amen. I have opened a door before you and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart and nobody's going to be able to stop it. Because when God starts it, he's able to perform the work. That he starts. Can I get a witness tonight? Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand praise one more time? <laughs> I want to make this appeal one more time, and then we're going to be dismissed. God specifically let me know. And I think the pastors know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. He let me know that he wants someone to get this message tonight, that he has given you the desires of your heart. He's heard your cry, and he's given you the desires of your heart. I don't know who it is, if it's here, if it's if somebody watching, but God specifically has told me that he has given you the desires of your heart. And not only that specific person, but point to yourself. <laughs> me too, Lord. <laughs> Don't forget me, Lord. I'm down here, Lord. I'm still here. There's some things I desire, Lord. And if I obey your word and seek you first and do what you say, Lord, then I know you're going to give it to me also. Can we take a moment in prayer as we dismiss? Do we need to do any announcements or anything? Are we all set with all that? Okay. Let's just take a moment in prayer and just lift our hands together and praise him one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. We receive your word. Uh, God, we receive your message tonight. Uh, hallelujah, Lord. You want to open the windows of heaven, Lord. Uh, God, you want to give us the desires of our heart, Lord. Uh, oh, God, those desires that are pure and holy, Lord, and righteous and moral, Lord. Uh, God, you've heard us, Lord. Uh, oh, God, you've opened the windows of heaven, Lord. We receive it by faith tonight, Lord. Uh, Jesus, I pray, Father, that you would go before us, Lord. Uh, let that perfect will be done, Lord. Bring it to pass that your word may be so, Lord. Uh, in Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Bless this thy people, Lord. Put your hand upon them. Strengthen us, Lord, for the task that lie ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And, and let the church say amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being patient.